When I was in Afghanistan, as air crew, we had a lot of bags to take to the aircraft, especially as a load master. The front enders, those who worked on the flight deck, didn't. So my boss, Dick, he's like, I'm getting pretty sick and tired of carrying my shit, Marty. Okay. <laughs> so what I do is I changed my name tags out on my uniform because you just the Velcro. Yeah, yeah. I was senior airman Dick Fitzwell. <laughs> Dick Fitzwell. <laughs> I'm Kringlebert Fisty Buns. I'm from Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Or what was the one that you liked the best? Uh, Bendy Dick Come and Snatch. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. I was senior airman, <laughs> Dick Fitzwell. So yeah, all, Dick Fitzwell. Of those, all of those gators. Uh, that were, Dr. Howie Felter Snatch. Is he exactly. your, uh, your so, position? Okay. So naturally, you were, you were royalty in the Air Force if you had your own gator to drive on. Okay. And for air crew, we had the air crew bus, but it sucked because it was always taken for somebody else to use for. So we necessarily didn't have wheels for transportation. So I go to the motor pool, and I switch my name tags out. I go there and says, I'd like to sign out one of your gators, please. And I'd like to have a hard top with hard doors because I'm not wearing that dumbass helmet. <laughs> <laughs> they made you wear a helmet inside of a vehicle that was already tested for rollovers. On Bagram, while you're on base. Yeah, it's, all, it's nothing but flat tops. Yes, it, but it, it, it gets funnier from that, por from, from that portion. But So I, I sign out this gator, and they're looking at me, and they said, okay, throws the book out in front of me. I sign for it. D fits well. <laughs> yeah. And I put in a bogus squadron. Nice. They didn't care, and I drive off. I've done, I did that on Victory a few so times. So I drove off with it. Never to return with it. Okay. I changed the I changed the unit designations on the gator. Oh, I, that's so I awesome. Paint, I spray painted over, so I, I made sure I had collected the spray paint first. They, and they cannot. They, they really can't un <laughs> until like well, it takes a long well, time. If you look, <laughs> if you really look at accountability, you get they get tired real in you know, the logistics. Things are coming and going all the time, so you got to play in those chaotic circles. So. I took the vehicle and my boss Dickie sees me spray painting the bumper on, and it's like 171st Airlift Squadron. He's like, Marty, where'd you get that? Oh, don't worry about it, Dickie. It's ours. <laughs> and, he's, and he's just like, all right. All right. Let's go to the BX. No, okay. I, I used to in Victory yeah. when I was, you know, first sergeant, you know, bouncing around there. Yeah. I, you know, I'd get dropped off and do something. I'd just walk up to like, a cut V or whatever, land yeah. get in, just drive off. Yeah. I mean, the vehicles. <laughs> and then I, mean, I would leave it parked wherever I was and it, just forget the, about it. The, the, the <laughs> ironic thing was it's a secure base and people would literally just leave keys in the vehicle. Yeah. You could walk out of the chow hall Jump in and the your vehicle. crew bus is gone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who took the crew bus? I don't know. And then they've un the, 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 there's always those memos. You will not commandeer vehicles. You will get maxed out. We will, we will court martial you. I'm like, okay. Well, <laughs> and so, but I, I made sure that we, the loadmasters, had their own little two, two wheel. You know, we had our own gator because we had our helmet bag. We had our uh, book bag with all our publications for or the aircraft if we needed various, various procedures, manuals, and the owner's manual for the C-130. At least you don't know everything. So, and <clears throat> carrying all that stuff, it's just, it gets a bit tedious, and Dickie was just had it by the third day of carrying gear. So when I, I got this little gator, and I says, now we can't take this, we can't take this anywhere near around the squadron because people are going to start to ask questions. So I had to put 171st Airlift Squadron all over that just to kind of show ownership to the Gator. And then the next thing was they see me and Dickie and the Gator were driving. And, and then somebody's like, hey, you got to wear your Kevlars. Dickie, he's E9. He goes, no, we're Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> and we drive. And he goes, just drive, Marty. Just drive. So we keep driving. <laughs> well, this this doesn't end the Dick Fitzwell story. Oh, okay. I got another one. Um, we could wear our PT uniforms, and I'm in the chow hall. I got my uniform partially zipped up, my jacket. This one E9 oh. interrupts his own lunch to come and check me about my uniform. You need to get your uniform within standards. Fine. 
we were three days out from leaving anyways. Yeah. Okay. Lost my appetite. I'm walking away. I pick up a Stars and Stripes. I'm walking and reading, you know, in the con- in, on the sidewalk, going back to my billet. Yeah. Okay. This, all right, first of all, this is how stupid the military has become. Yes. Well, you can't walk and read at the same fucking time. Yeah. Because you have to salute, but everybody else is wearing a PT uniform with no rank on the exterior. Yeah. It's so dumb. You got your sad trombone up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm walking and reading Stars and Stripes. Wow. Going back, and all I hear is, hey, you. I just keep going. And it's that, you know, they, somebody yells out again, hey, you, in the PT uniform, reading the newspaper. Damn it. <laughs> all right. I tuck it under. It's that same E9 who checked me earlier. Ugh. Balls. Oh, damn. Okay. How am I going to get out of this one? Ah. Uh-huh. I approach him and he goes, You again. You got a problem. I can sense a real attitude in you. What's your name? Senior Airman Fitzwell. Where are you staying, Fitzwell? I give him the billet. <laughs> yeah. And so he goes, I'm going to be over there and I'm going to speak to your commander, aircraft NCAA. commander. I'll be right there. I haul ass. I'm cutting through the 82nd Airborne's tent area because it was right up to mine. And so it's just, I show up. There's Tim. We all called him Kendall. That was his name, Kendall. Do I the ladies, why? The ladies loved it. Wherever we flew, he knew a chick. Yeah. Oh. So we called him Kendall. I thought it was because you caught him changing in the shower and he didn't have a <laughs> I didn't give him the name. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, what are the rules of nicknames? I was about to be, oh, poor guy. Oh, it's that. All right, that's fine. Yes. yes. One, you don't pick your nickname, and sooner or later, you have to accept it. Yes. And, and you do. don't make your own. Yes. Because we actually had a pi- uh, pilot, they called him Fuzzy, because he had the hairiest chest and back. Yeah. So, a- anyways. <laughs> so, Tim's like, Marty, we don't run in the Air Force. Why are you panting? We and don't like, run in the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's, so, that's great. Oh, my God. I thought the defense, hey, I'm in the Air Force. I thought that was golden. <laughs> hey, Marty, we don't run here. What's going on? What's going on, man? You're trying too so hard. I'm, I'm standing here. I'm like, Jim, this uh, E9. He's like, calm down. So I explained to him the story. And he's like, <laughs> Here, put this hand, and I'll put these sunglasses on, and let's go outside. So I see him walking up to the billet across from mine. Tim's like, what'd you do, Marty? Just wait, Tim. Just wait. <laughs> and he's banging on the door. All right. And he's like, Airman Fitzwell. I had to give him the first name, but, you know, for YouTube purposes. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's going to hurt their feelings. Anyway. <laughs> Where? So he's banging on the door, and this female opens up in a little skirted robe. Uh-huh. He's like, I'm looking for Dick Fitzwell. She goes, Well, so am I. Wham! Slams <laughs> <laughs> the door in his face. <laughs> and he's like, He's looking around. Tim's like, Let's go hide. So, and then all you hear is, I'm looking for Dick Fitzwell. Fits well, and somebody's <laughs> hollering out, "Don't ask, don't tell," you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so Tim, oh. Tim, uh, then Timmy's like, "Marty, that was genius. <laughs> We're gonna have to hide you for three days until we leave." <laughs> Dude, that is great. Yeah. So a, Dick Fitzwell the, the is a whole, national treasure. So I, I get, I got a patch named with Dick Fitzwell on it and, <laughs> and so word got back to my squadron commander and he's like you want to tell me about dick fitzwell <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about sir um, <laughs> I, i've got those before hey pop why don't you r- walk me through the whole process again? yes yeah exactly why don't you just break it down for me in the how did this <laughs> alter ego suddenly just come out and where the hell did you come up with dick fitzwell? But, but the thing is yeah a lot of these officers love to hear these stories. Yeah. They're not going to do anything about it. Yeah. They just want to hear all the nasty details. <laughs> Does he know you're on my command? Uh-huh. No. Okay, we're good. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs>
Watch Grunt Speak Live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern and bring the strong stuff. Now is not the time for beer. That comes later. <laughs>